Hello, it's me again. Um, Thursday night, uh, nine o'clock. I have uh, a couple hours left uh, before my day. Uh, well, before I have no more energy. One thing that was bothering me was the fact that now, like the the backpack that I have is great for to uh, to um, to carry all the all of the gear all together. But uh, when I do just quick day hikes or just a walk in the woods, just to go uh, go shopping, as Mike says, um, well, I'm gonna want to have something a bit more portable. Like uh, I was thinking, just a a hip bag or. Um, Uh, day pouch, whatever. Anyway, uh, it, a hip bag is basically the idea that I'm looking for. Um, so just something to strap over the shoulder to one side, the opposite hip from my knife. Uh, something probably about 12 inches. Uh, yeah, about 12 inches wide, uh, but the say about a square with just a, a simple flap over the over the top. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make any compartments in it or anything. Just a simple. And I can put everything in the, in that pouch. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it before the course. It's uh, Thursday night, nine o'clock. Um, I usually don't work past eleven. So in two hours, I don't think I'll have anything ready. But either way, it's another video. So uh, I'll be making this one out of deer skin. I had a great deal from Tandy, Tandy Leathers uh, instead of like a hundred. They're really expensive, the 130, 140 dollars for a hide. It was down to 40 bucks, uh, so I jumped on that opportunity to get a nice steer hide uh, for uh, smaller bags, and it's a it's a really nice leather. Um, yeah. So uh, the other idea, the only other specification to the to the uh, to the bag uh, for like the end result is that the back. I saw this uh, idea on another crafts. Um, channel um, and this might be a kind of a standard thing but I, I found it really cool uh, on his hip bag in the back of it there was a loop for the hatchet so you have your bag in the front and you, you also carry your small uh, bushcraft hatchet uh, like right on the back so I thought that was a great idea uh, especially when I'm uh, if I just take that bag for a day hike I still can carry my knife on one hip and the, my hatchet on the other and it leaves all room and it distributes the weight properly uh, in the bag too. So that was one and I was wondering what I was going to do with a strap. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think I was going to waste all that leather to make a long strap. Uh, I didn't know exactly how so I was playing around with ideas in my head and I figured that um, eventually I'm certainly not going to have the time to do that before the course. Um, but for the strap, I will probably be doing a cobra weave with uh, paracord. I got three packs of like 150 feet paracord, so I got plenty of uh, material to do it. And it would be a great opportunity for another video to show you guys how to do a cobra weave for the people that don't know. I have never done it, and it, but I, when I looked at it, just a couple of pictures, it seems extremely simple to do. Just very, very long. So, um, so eventually, the, the uh, strap would be a full cobra weave. Uh, it must be six feet long, uh, maybe five, you know, the, from the bag to the shoulder back to the bag. It's going to be about five feet long. So uh, one to 50, that's like 50, so five feet. It's like 10, it's a foot per inch. Uh, it's a foot of cord per inch of length of cobra weave. So that's going to be a lot of cord. All right, so I uh, skimmed through this a little bit faster or a lot faster than I did uh, the other videos. Like if I'm in the future, like until now, I've been doing uh, really, in, um, really very, very detailed uh, videos uh, and some people have really appreciated that. Um, but if I'm using the same techniques as I've used in other videos, uh, I'm, I'm, prob I'm just going to uh, kind of go through the, the, the main steps uh, quicker. Uh, so if you're interested in, in seeing how to uh, prep the drawings or uh, and uh, and cut away the pattern, then you can check out the other uh, my earlier leatherworking videos. So what we've done, what I've done until now, is I've already traced. Uh, the design itself is extremely, like I said, extremely, extremely simple. So it's just the front flap with a backing, and then this will go towards the front. So 
sew these, this seam will sew to this seam, this seam will sew to this seam. There's a flap here that will be folded over so to make a nice front and this will just flap on the side. This here is our axe, um, our axe holder and I've actually already just cut out, same, same from the drawing. Uh, I even glued it on the loop. I've measured this to, or specifically to my hatchet so uh, I know it fits. I've already, um, um, I'm forgetting the, the I'm already forgetting the, the term for uh, this uh, little rivet there, whatever. And I've drilled the holes so it's all prepped. So since we're going, we're using uh, soft leather and hard leather, I've pre-drilled the holes on the hard leather so that I can just use the uh, sewing awl uh, to punch through, like I'll just pu put the all through the, the, the hole and then it'll be easier to stitch. Um, so I've already actually already uh, just, uh, set the line to cut and I'm going to be using So I'm actually going to be using the natural end fiber here. So this is actually going to be the end, uh, the, the, the flap in the front. I'm going to just take this ragged uh, top and I think it's going to kind of make it look rustic. Um, if not, I can just, you know, trim it and cut it and whatever, but I think it'll look kind of neat. So I'm going to just use that whole piece right here. All right, so next part of our uh, gathering bag series. I just find this, the, the front of this, um, I actually, I didn't get the chance to uh, to finish this, or I did, I guess. I I got this far on our gathering bag, bag uh, prior to leaving uh, to the, uh, the survival weekend. So it, it worked awesome. Um, the size is perfect. Uh, it was very comfortable to carry. Uh, so the two things that I want to I want to make um, make nicer is I just find this front a little bit uh, just bland. So there's nothing, no decoration or anything. And I also I I think I'm gonna eventually uh, reinforce this just to make it a bit more stiff. But I'm not gonna do that right now. So the two things that I want to work on is along, I'm gonna add some uh, suede cord. Uh, just uh, here and this was just a temporary just a paracord that I looped around with some with some knots as I go uh, and so it served perfect just for a simple wrap but I do want to make something a bit more um, rugged and uh, functional okay so basically what I did was I just drew out this basic little pattern here and I'm going to take uh, my quarter inch chisel and there's, there's all kinds of little techniques or um, tools to get this done but I mean I already got a chisel so I figured I'm just going to punch a hole diagonally about every 
I don't know, three quarter inches to an inch, I guess. Hopefully that'll look nice. Okay. So, it adds a bit of color, right? So that's, yeah, that's nice. So I think I'm gonna put a second, maybe. So just leave it like that. All right, the next part is I want a paracord cobra weave uh, for a strap. So I measured this out. It's exactly 42 inches. So 40, 42, whatever. Um, okay. So for enable to be able, in order to be able to, uh, get this, like to make it, uh, to make a dual color, we're going to have to melt these together. At least that's what I saw on the interweb. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. Let me get you a little closer, sorry. Okay, so I took out a little bit of string. I just backed this up a bit and cut it. Okay. So that I'm going to take it from here and I bring it out. I have an empty spot. So the other one, I'm going to singe off a bit. of water here so that uh, okay so I just watched this quick little video tutorial thing that you I took a bit of string out of this one and I sealed this one off and I'm just going to insert one into the other okay here just a little bit So I'm going to singe that. Essentially melting them together. So it doesn't have to be very strong, it just needs to hold it together because there's not going to be any weight against this part. The part that's holding, that has all of the weight is a strap in the background, right? This is just aesthetics. Alright, so just a quick uh, example of how to do a cobra weave. So I took a string that is that is uh, two colors because that's what I use for my strap and I actually noticed that uh, it was a lot easier to do um, 
So two tips for you. This is not is not what you would do to tie them together. I showed that a while ago. Um, how the proper way to clean your clean your way to to, to uh, attach them to together. But this is just for an example. So you pick a color that you want on the outside, and that's what that's the one that you're gonna use as a guide. So I'll pick this lighter color. So you bring it underneath. Step one. Underneath. Okay. Then all you have to do is take the second one and bring that one underneath here, over, and through. Okay? And that's it. First one, loop underneath. The other one, underneath. So under, over, and through. And you tug. So the first couple of ones don't look that good. So, so the first tip, like I said, you keep taking the same color. If the both strings are the same color, this is a bit harder. Uh, you basically just go the opposite of the loop. That's the other trick. So I found it was really easy. Uh, I, because these two actually have different textures, I was able to do the whole strap. Um, by the time I got through half the strap, my, my hands were so used to doing this movement that I, I barely was looking at the, uh, the string. So. First, so you take the loop underneath the your baseline, underneath on the other side for, and then so under, over, and through. Tug. The only the second so I'll I'll do this. So once you pull it through, you kind of just massage till it feels nice and tight. There, and you you repeat. So I'm going to do a couple of these just to get this uh, this pattern in, so you can see what it's supposed to look like. So under, under, over, and through. Okay, pull, 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 and then just kind of tug on each, and you feel when it's nice and tight. So you see here, so under, under, over, and through. Okay. So you see here the start of a cobra weave. So the first tip was, like I said, if you're using two colors, it's a lot easier to know which one to start with every time because it just keeps in, uh, you just keep changing. So the second thing is, especially if you're going to using, you're going to be using a long, long piece uh, like I was doing. I had to go, I had to use uh, 42 feet of cord. So especially like for, until the about, about the middle of the strap, it was long pieces. Uh, that I had to go through. So imagine this. This is just a couple of inches. So under, over, and through. So this part through. To I had to pull 21 feet through that hole. And at the and I was also taking uh, this piece and I was switching it over. So I was pulling another 21 feet over that way. And then I was tugging. So it took me a, a good foot of this to realize I don't need to pull this, the first one. So I just put it there. I, I, I go through the loop, I leave this one dangling that way, and then I go, I go under, over and through, and this one I pull through because it has to go through, and then I tug, leaving this there. It's already under for the next one. So under, and through, and then this one you pass through. So your baseline, if you will, your base cord or your color cord or whatever you want to call it is always just staying the same side so you only need to, to, to pull one string through under over and through Oop, sorry. so as soon as I figure this out figured this out the the weaves went a lot faster did I just screw up no okay so I'm talking and I'm doing this a little bit slower than I was doing it, but so but you you get the idea of how long it takes to get just this distance. So for the strap, over here. So for this. Turned out really nice. 
color two uh, the, the the two colors uh two colors gave the the look that I wanted and uh so whatever you just burn the ends here I just tie it off and then burn the ends it's not gonna go anywhere yeah so a lot nicer than uh, just a couple of ends of co uh, paracord uh, tied in knots so so basically this is the end of our hatchet carrying resource gathering bag So I hope you enjoyed uh, the project and this is one of the, I think this is already one of my favorite, uh, favorite gear. Uh, it's, it's perfect for the, for the day hikes and the, the short, short hikes. I want to just bring a couple of pieces of, along with me and uh, of course always my hatchet. So um, yeah, if you guys have any idea, any other ideas for some neat projects. Uh, let me know. Uh, always like and subscribe to the video if you like the content. And um, I'll see you guys next time.